The Xianwai 20 Kunpan not only lifts the heavy loads of the Chinese military, but also the Chinese global influence and aviation industry. But as usual, it is also a highly controversial military transport aircraft due to copying and industrial espionage allegations. As the weapon detective, we're investigating the Y-20, another symbol of China's increasing force projection capability. The Y-20 Kumpan is currently one of the hottest topics in military aviation. It seems like a quite capable military transport aircraft, even though its capabilities have not been officially unveiled yet. The official nickname of the Y-20 is Kumpan, a mythical giant fish bird from the Taoist classic Zhuangzi. However, its unofficial nickname is Pangyu, meaning chubby chick. Until the 1980s, China had a military whose primary task was territorial defense. This gigantic army took its power from quantity, not quality. But then, the Chinese economy was grown, which led to two essential changes. First, Beijing now had the money to spend on more sophisticated weapon systems. Second, a growing economy needed more raw materials and new markets, so China had to increase its global influence. It also required a new type of military with a high force projection capability. Initially, Beijing prioritized its naval investments. After the USSR collapsed, new opportunities arose in military aviation area. In the 1990s, the People's Liberation Army Air Force, shortly PLAF, got the IL-76 strategic military transport aircraft, whose NATO reporting name is Candid. With the assistance of the Ukrainian Antonov company, Shanxi Aircraft Corporation developed and produced more capable variants of the Y-8, the Chinese copied variant of the AN-12 produced since the early 1980s. This work would also lead to the Y-9's creation in the 2010s. Since the IL-76 offered a satisfactory performance to the PLAF, China initially planned to purchase a new batch of Candid from Russia. However, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, its production line remained in Uzbekistan and Russia did not restore the aircraft's production capacity. Everyone expected that China would copy the IL-76. They were wrong. Beijing had a different plan. Many sources claim that the Chinese hacked the major US aviation companies. Also, they had the technical support of Antonov. Designing a new and more capable strategic military transport aircraft was a wiser way than copying the IL-76 of the 1970s. So, Beijing initiated the Y-20 project in 2007. During the design and development phase, the Chinese engineers used many advanced technologies and techniques such as 3D printing, the model-based definition design technique, and the relational database management system. Besides, a human-machine interface which utilized virtual reality via a helmet-mounted display was developed for the Y20's design. By these, the time and cost of all processes were reduced dramatically. Some internet sources shared photos of the Y-20 prototype in 2012. The aircraft made its maiden flight on January 26, 2013. The PLAF took the first serial Y-20 into service on July 6, 2016. The Y-20's fuselage, wings and tail are of mainly composite materials. The wings have triple slotted trailing edge flaps. Its cabin incorporates flame retardant. The cockpit incorporates four large multicolor liquid crystal electronic flight instrument system displays. The floor of the cargo bay and the ramp are equipped with standardized rail and attachment points to facilitate the preparation of the aircraft. The cargo bay has a length of 20 meters, a width of 4 meters and a height of 4 meters. The Y-20 can carry up to 66 tons of cargo. According to many sources, the aircraft can transport such a load to 7,800 kilometers. On the other hand, the official US sources estimate that the Y-20 can reach a 3,700 kilometer range with a 66-ton cargo. They also claim the aircraft can fly 5,200 and 4,500 kilometers with 51 and 55-ton payloads, respectively. The Y-20 can transport one ZTZ-99 main battle tank, two ZTQ-15 light tanks, or two ZTL-11 wheeled armored assault vehicles. 
It is known that the Y-20 was not designed for taking off and landing from unprepared runways particularly. However, it is estimated that the aircraft has this capability, albeit limited. An unloaded Y-20 has a taken off distance of 600 to 700 meters. But it increases the 1,040 meters with a 20 ton cargo and over 1,250 meters with heavier loads. To reduce the landing distance, the Salaviov D30 KP2 turbofan engine of the Y-20 are fitted with thrust reversers. For self-defense, the aircraft is equipped with chaff and flares dispensers. The Y-20 has no air refueling capability since it has no air refueling probe and the PLAAF has no tanker aircraft with the boom system. Speaking of the air refueling capability, the YY-20 is the tanker variant of the Y-20. It supplements the PLAAF's CNH-6U fleet. The YY-20 made its maiden flight in 2018 and entered PLAAF service in 2022. This variant features redesigned landing gear sponsons with sharper front and back ends to reduce air turbulence. China unveiled the Y-20B version with four Shenyang WS-20 high-bypass turbofans in 2020. This engine produces 20.32 kN more power than the D30 KP2 on the A variant. It's likely that the Y-20B entered service this year in 2023. Probably, China will also take the Y-20B's tanker version too. Besides, Xi'an is working on the aircraft's airborne early warning and control and civilian variants. The three-person crew of the Y-20A consists of a pilot, co-pilot and loadmaster. The aircraft has a length of 47 meters, a wingspan of 50 meters and a height of 15 meters. Its wing area is 310 square meters. The empty weight of the Y-20A is about 100 tons while its maximum takeoff weight is 220 tons. The power plant consists of four 117.68 kN Salaviov D30 KP2 turbofan engines. Its top speed is 800 km per hour, while its cruise speed is 630 km per hour. The service ceiling is about 13,000 meters, in other words, 43,000 feet. The aircraft's fare range is 8,000 to 10,000 km. In 2018, the Y-20 conducted its first joint airdrop training operations with the PLAAF airborne troops. Two years later, the aircraft was a part of a fleet that delivered supplies and personnel to Wuhan during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2022, the Y-20 transported humanitarian supplies to Tonga, Afghanistan and Pakistan. In the same year, six Y-20s landed at Belgrade Nikola Tesla Airport in Serbia to deliver the FK-3 surface-to-air missile systems. These missions have proven how the Y-20 increased China's strategic air transport capability. But also, the aircraft is a symbol of the level up in the Chinese aviation industry. As mentioned, the Chinese engineers use many advanced technologies and techniques such as 3D printing, the model-based definition design technique and the relational database management system during the design and development phase. The model-based definition design technique accelerated the development progress, reduced the workload and lowered manufacturing costs. This technique was mandatory for all contractors and subcontractors of the Y-20 program, which forced them to level up. The composites used in the Y-20 were produced in China, whereas they had to be imported before. Besides, the 703 Institute established a comprehensive Chinese evaluation and certification system for aviation composite materials based on international standards. Yet, the evidence indicates industrial espionage played an essential role in these achievements. It is known that China hacked the major US aviation companies, including Boeing, the designer and producer of the C-17. Also, Beijing bribed some US employees to leak information. So, many think that the Y-20 is nothing but a copy of the C-17 Globemaster III. Still, being a copy does not necessarily make a system inferior. The Y-20 can carry heavy loads to distant areas. The aircraft never says, I cannot transport a cargo because I'm just a copy. Besides, in our many Chinese system videos, we already mentioned that belittling the enemy is not a wise way. If we look at history, 
we can see that this has always been the way. In the 7th century, the Muslims took Greek philosophy and science and entered a golden age. We can also say they copied them. Then, the Europeans took Muslim philosophy and science and became the world's dominant power. The Chinese invented gunpowder and compass. These two inventions would later be an essential part of Western supremacy. The Japanese, a Far East nation, took the technology from the Europeans. Still, in the early 1940s, the Mitsubishi A6M0 was superior to its Western counterparts. As you see, taking or copying something has always been the civilization's driving force. Also, history shows us that this method could shift the balance if the copying party takes these developments to the next step and the copied party begins to regress. So, China only follows a way well known since the ancient times. It's too early to predict if our civilization is on the verge of a shift. The later moves of the parties will show us what would be. The form of a modern military transport aircraft is obvious. It has a broad cylindric fuselage with sponsons and a rear loading ramp. Its swept shoulder wings are located near the midsection due to the center of gravity. The engines are under the wings and the cockpit is at the front top. Let's assume that the Chinese never see the C-17. Still, they would design an aircraft that looks like the Globemaster III. This hypothetical aircraft would never look something like this. A pickup truck, truck and trailer truck are all motor vehicles. They can carry people and cargo. However, their purpose, load capacity and dimensions make them distinguished from each other. Comparing the Y-20 with the A400M, C2 or C390 is absurd. They're apples and oranges. These European, Japanese and Brazilian aircraft cannot carry a main battle tank while the Chinese one does. The C2 and A400M might compete with the Y20 in the market. Some current IL-76 operators have good relations with the West and the less capable C2 and A400M are sufficient for their needs. Still, the C390 has no place in this picture. It is a promising candidate to replace the C130 and AN-12. Yet, a country like Pakistan or Iran which has problematic relations with the West and needs a higher capacity military transport aircraft, would probably choose the Y-20. We can compare the Y-20 with only the C-17. We can easily say that the Globemaster III is superior to the Compound. Still, this superiority is not an overwhelming one. According to our analysis, the Y-20 is a perfect aircraft for its purpose, even if it's a copy. It has dramatically increased China's strategic transport and force projection capabilities. The aircraft also has export potential. The USA would never sell the C-17 to China and the Chinese aviation industry could not develop a better aircraft than the Globemaster III in its first attempt. So what could China do better? Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.